Alrighty. Hi, Obi. Good morning. I played so much Star Rail yesterday that this game is very foreign to me. <laughs> Good morning, Wynn. They added more cards to so their little card game. A new version? Radiant Secrets. Cute. Navia is a playable character now. I don't even know what this is, but I guess I did it. And then there is currently a event happening in Fontaine. I want to give Navia a test drive really quick. I really like her, I but I have no desire to acquire her. So I'm okay spoiling myself. When Navia or other party members collect elemental shards created by the crystallized reaction, Navia gains crystal shrapnel. When her elemental skill is tapped, all shrapnel stacks will be consumed to fire Rosula shard shots. The more shrapnel snacks stacks consumed the more shard shots will be fired and the greater damage that can be dealt um when it's held it enters aiming mode aoe okay my time with the Spina has taught me that carrying an unreliable weapon is worse than not carrying one at all. She's so cute. Oh. Big. I thought she was like a, a like a bow or something. Okay. That's awesome. I love the heft of it. Oh, she kicks it! And then she curtsies? What the hell? Oh my god, she's so cute. Holy shit, where's Riley? I need to show him this. Oh, I'm obsessed. <laughs> she's so cute! And it turns into an umbrella? No fucking way. She's so cute. Oh my god, she's so cute! Does her, um... How do I... Use... Her plunge attack here. Well, that's how you die. Oh, come on. I can't plunge attack. There's no way for me to get high. Ah, oh, so sad. Okay, I wanted to see if it utilized the, like, umbrella in any way. One more. Okay. She's so cute! Yeah! Okay, wait, let's actually look at her attacks. Like, elemental attacks. Hey there. Oh, wait, is it her umbrella? Her umbrella is a gun.
Her umbrella is a fucking gun. Alright, big attack. Holy shit! Oh my god, I love her! Holy shit! Oh my god, she's so fun to play! Whoa, that was so fun. She's so cute! Wow. I do love when they make stupid things into guns. I love, like, parasol guns. That's hilarious. All right. Oh, well, that was fun. Time to act. All right, and so the event I'm gonna do today, I don't really know anything about it, but it is like a festival. <gasps> Arena might be there. And also I, there were some characters I did not recognize like you. Who the hell is this? Chuny ass looking. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Who is she? Seriously? But, Mr. Morris, I don't understand, sir. How could you only be telling me this now? <sighs> I'm afraid that there's nothing really I can do. I'm really facing a crisis. My hands are tied. But what about my film? Well, I'm afraid you have to come up with something on your own. Take it from me. Sometimes you just have to let things go. Is that a Same reoccurring in PC? Festival. It feels familiar. Oh. <laughs> hey, isn't that Xavier? <laughs> so he's back in Fontaine now. So it is. Hi, Turnip. Want to be on camera? Oh, why, if it isn't the dear Traveler and Paimon. I really didn't expect to bump into you here at this time. How have you been? Well, I was doing just fine until I received some terrible news just now. The investor I was working with for my upcoming film has fallen upon some hard times and is no longer able to provide the promised amount of funds. Can't you just find a different investor? Unfortunately, that's not how it works. We had signed an agreement specific to the Fontanalia Film Festival, stipulating that I cannot work with any other investors until the festival is finished. Oh, bye. The Fontanalia Film Festival? What's that? Oh, is this your first time participating in Fontaine's Fontanalia Film Festival? Did we just then, got uh, here like you this in. year? The Fontanalia Festival was established to commemorate the legendary Loch Knights, who went on a quest to search for the Oceanids and eventually welcomed the Hydro Arconigeria. Uh, the holiday is deeply connected to the founding of Fontaine, as well as its unique laws and trials. It's one of the most important festivals for this nation. But what's with that weird expression on your face? It's like you're trying really hard to remember something. What 
the little sound effect? I was just trying to recall the exact description from the books. <laughs> In order to avoid any uh, unnecessary arguments over semantics, <laughs> I usually try to recite things straight from the source. Well, either way, Pilot thinks she gets it now. It's just like the Windbloom Festival in Mondstadt and the Lantern right in Lilith. Yes, those are festivals of a similar variety. <laughs> Who doesn't like a good festival? And just like those of other nations, Fontaine will hold a plethora of events around this time each year. To commemorate the Loch Knights, people will imitate them by putting on special costumes, raising golden cups, and going door to door asking for pure water. <laughs> but a few years ago, Lady Farina started to find the whole idea a little huh? drab, and so decided to change the part about pure water to sweets. Oh my god. That really doesn't surprise Paimon at all. The whole thing seems more akin to a carnival now, and it's quite popular among the kids. Every year, you can hear a bunch of them saying, trial or treat. <laughs> You're telling me that Fontaine's Halloween used to have water instead of candy. <laughs> oh, that sounds pretty fun. But how does that connect back to the film festival you mentioned? Ah, yes, I, it appears I've strayed off topic. <laughs> I just got too excited after seeing you. Let me get back to the point. The Fontanalia Film Festival is an event proposed by the Fontaine Film Association this year. Now that film technology has matured as a medium, it's the matured. perfect time to introduce more people to the art form. During this time, people may submit films to be evaluated, and the entry with the highest score will be given the Farina Award by the association. The what award? The Farina Award. You know, after the Hydro Archon. They coined it while Lady Farina was still in power, but uh, even though things have changed, no one has made any motion to update the name. Perhaps everyone still thinks of it as a pretty appropriate name. Even though she isn't the Hydro Archon any longer, Lady Farina is still Fontaine's superstar. Anyone with eyes can see the way she shines on the stage. Oh, but who would have guessed there'd be an issue with the funding? How will I ever explain this to Miss Chiori? Not to say all the other actors who traveled all the way here from Inazuma. I wonder if, like, so if Farina is in this event, it's, is she going to be normal? Like, is she going to be, like, acting or not? And is this event even playable if you haven't done the Archon quests? Chiori? Uh, sounds familiar. Chiori? Why have we heard that name before? She runs the clothing store in the Court of Fontaine. Yes, that's her. I asked her to oversee the event's art direction, including the design of the actor's costumes and appearances. Oh, Paimon remembers now. Navia said that her clothes were designed by Chiori, and Kirara's outfit too. How to describe her? Uh, well, she tends to be pretty direct and can be very forceful when it comes to dealing with people. The fashion world in Fontaine has dubbed her the Thundering Seamstress. Her remarkable designs have led many Fontanians to become very interested in Inazuma. Anyway, Chiori is acquainted with all the actors I've invited from Inazuma. Without her help, I don't think I would have been able to get such an international cast for the film. She really is a kind soul. Who are the actors from Inazuma? Do we know them? Why don't the two of you accompany me to the Aquabus station to welcome them? Oh boy! Judging from the time, the Aquabus should be arriving shortly. Chiori will be waiting to meet me there as well. Who's the one with the fucking eye patch? Who is that? Oh. Cute. Oh. Man, I love... Genshin has such fun, like, design elements. Ooh, 
What is this? These are so cute. What the hell? Thousand pace interdiction arc minute sharpshooting zone. During the Fontanalia Film Festival, you and Paimon encounter a special member of the guards. She seems to be looking for guests to partake in an event test. Should I do that first? Or should I greet whoever's at the thing? Oh, everyone's like... I don't recognize these outfits. She's cute. Oh, I should do this. Oops. Famous director. Petite Lumiere. Everyone is so cute. All right, so I assume that those four things were like little extra events. Yeah, oh, it's so cute, the way everything clinks together. All right, let's see who's at the Aquabus station. Can I just fast travel? Boop. Boop. Motion blur. Body and mind. I don't remember how this works. Can I just go down from here? Yeah. Guys, I'm doing a karaoke tonight, but with friends. And I'm hoping everything's gonna work out okay. I'm mostly like worried like on a tech standpoint. Um, my last karaoke I tested in the room that I'm gonna do it in tonight. Uh, who the hell is that? She's cute. Um, but I'm gonna try to integrate a second mic and hope that it that it that I can get it to work without any like weird echoing or like any of that. So I'm going to be spending, as soon as I end stream, honestly, whenever that is, it's going to be setting up karaoke for tonight, which I think I said is 6 p.m. Central. Oh, <gasps> wait, she's cute. Her shoes. What the heck? Uh, Miss Chiori? Chiori. <sighs> Your talk with the investor sure went fast. The Aquabus hasn't even arrived yet. She's so cute. Oh. And who are they? It's gonna be fun. Uh, yeah, I'm excited. Allow me to introduce you. This is the Traveler and Paimon. Like, every time Professor does, like, a, a IRL karaoke with, like, the whole setup, I'm like, ooh, I want that so bad. I wish that was me. I want to do that. <laughs> Pleased to meet you. Hi, Prongles. Likewise, we've heard the owner of Chioria Boutique is a skilled seamstress, so it's a real pleasure to finally meet you in person. The way Navia's wardrobe comes together is really exceptional. Why, thank you. I strove to create an outfit that matched her high social station as the demoiselle. So tell me, what happened? I can tell the conversation didn't go quite as expected. <laughs> it's my faded enemy, uh, well, Paimon. It's like this. I don't think Paimon has spoken 
so far, except for right now. So just for you. I know, I know, Chiori, you don't have to say it. You did remind me that this investor was a little bit sketchy. I yes, love her shoes. There's no doubt about that. But how could I pass it up? <laughs> he offered me twice as much as the others. And therein lies the problem. Yes, but just put yourself in my shoes. After obtaining such an excellent script, it's only natural that I would want to make the most of the film. The budgets that the others had proposed were nowhere near enough. It's difficult to find someone willing to front such a large amount of Mora, so... Don't be sad, Xavier. We might be able to help scrounge up some more together for you. Oh, thank you, Paimon. That means a lot to me. But the cost of the film is staggering. I'm afraid that any Mora we can scrounge together in a short amount of time won't even be able to cover the actor's fees. How did, how did, we, how did we come up with What's the word has scrounge? And there's no changing it. But now's not the time to give up. What? You're saying that you have a plan? It, it's one of those words that hasn't really registered to me as strange until right now. Like, it feels like a nonsense word that became normal. <laughs> Scrounge. Informal. Yeah, okay. But, like, where did it come from? Like, how did that... How did it form? Scrounge. No, that's not what I'll I mean. research. I'm simply saying I'm I curious wouldn't give up now. just yet. The actors I recommended aren't just after Mora after all. Oh. Huh? It's an alteration of scrunch, which means to wander about idly really then where do you live where did scrum live in mary c village <laughs> the only way to enter is from underwater oh, man. oh you must be pretty tired after work every day right i mean you have to swim all that way just to go home to acquire by irregular means an alteration of You're dialect so scrunch yeah so okay choose to live in the court of fontaine because it's so much more convenient I love when um, descriptions of words are like, yeah, it comes from this word, which we also don't know where that came from. <laughs> this is our stop. Oh, oh fuck, Ayato is arrived, here? But I haven't even been chatting with Evil yet. Cute, where? What a, what a cute little gang. I also introductions to Fontaine along the way. Everything you described was so clear and detailed that we can't help but want to hear more. Oh, and Ayaka's Thank wearing her so little, much. her I'm cute little like outfit. So I hope I'll have the chance to see you again. There are still many more places I'd like to introduce to you. <laughs> it says it came about in World War I, but may have originated from Cockney slang from the 1750s. That's so funny. We have so many words that are, are like that, that I do not second guess at all. Welcome to the Court of Fontaine. Scrunge. Scrunge. What a weird word. <laughs> Chiori, you sure have changed a lot. This is the first time we've seen you since you left Inazuma. I haven't realized it's been so long. I was in such a rush when I left that I didn't even get to say goodbye. Her little, Thank like, you pin for cushion? The invitation, Mr. Xavier. I'm looking forward to a fruitful trip here in Fontaine. Ugh, it's an honor to have the head of the Kamisato clan visit us. So they are who you meant when you said you had actors coming from Inazuma? Oh, it's the Traveler and Paimon. Man, Genshin voice acting must be a pain in the ass to organize because they do so many like time sensitive events that feature just uh, random grab bags of, of, of cast members. And uh, 
they just have to be available. Like, what if you can't get... I mean, I, I guess they... They're doing this far in advance. But still. Like, what a pain this must be. Wow, what a coincidence! Ayaka and I were just talking... I bet they all have home here. studios? Oh, Probably. So yeah, you're right. We just ran into Xavier earlier and came over with him. But what if, like, what if someone's <laughs> sick? <laughs> but I'm not an actress. Sir Kamisato and Lady Ayaka are the real actors here. I'm just tagging along with Ayaka to have a good time together. And, and they have to do that in four different languages. And it's not like they can be like, oh, well, since we can't get so-and-so, we'll just, like, not use that character. Because they're using that character in all the other languages. And the story's, like, already written about the character. It's just, like, a very bizarre... I think about it a lot. I think a lot about the behind-the-scenes of how Genshin is made. And it gives me a headache. <laughs> I thought I would always get the lead role. Uh, about that, I mean, how was I supposed to contact you when I was making preparations for the film? I figured you were probably busy and I didn't want to disturb you. So I could only keep you in the back of my mind while I sought other actors to play the lead roles in the film. <laughs> I had been thinking about a surprise reunion with you during our trip here, but you still managed to surprise me first. Ayaka's so cute. I suppose the planning process is probably pushing the voice acting near the end. It's not like they need to line up the lips. Yeah, you're right. Because most of the time, their mouths ain't even moving. Oh, so you all know <laughs> each other already. <laughs> My, what a coincidence. What are the chances everyone could be brought together here like this? Why don't we go to Hotel de Boer and catch up over a meal? I've already made a reservation. Huh? Did you reserve two spots for us, too? Yes, of course, of course. I'll be sure to tell the boss to serve a few more delicious dishes just to make sure there'll be enough food. Very well. Then please, kindly lead the way, Mr. Xavier. Speaking of voice acting, is that what Ayato normally sounds like? I feel like his voice is deep. Wow, the buildings in Fontaine are so tall. Just look at how big they are. And there's the fountain that Abel mentioned earlier. It really is a magnificent sight. We and love our fountain orb. Sphere. Where does it get its power? <gasps> Wait a sec. Could it be one of those clockwork mecha we've heard so much about? Go to the Hotel de Boer. Is this on that level? Let's hope. Navigating the city has been a fucking nightmare for me. There we go. Wow. So this is what food from Fontaine is like. <laughs> it sure is different from what Look how big that fork is. How should I describe it? It seems like you have to go through a lot more uh, steps to make them. And the flavor has many layers too. It's so funny. Because like from here, the perspective, it's like, oh yeah. I can see that's a plate and some silverware. But like the moment you actually zoom in, it's like, oh, it's fucking enormous. <laughs> One thing that makes me think they're doing home studios is how many times they'll vary the actual name pronunciation. Or I was watching an anime last night and there was just a common word that was mispronounced. Yeah, it's like it's like they're being sent the script separately and like no none of the voice actors are communicating with each other. And they're just sort of taking it their own way. Like, <laughs> like, like some of the name pronunciations are wild in how 
how much they vary. Ah, uh, yes. So when yeah, I that's, first that's went to Inazuma, probably the case. I actually thought the food there tasted a little too bland. It took some time for me to get used to it. Inazuma Let's food? Get back to the purpose of this trip for a moment. I guess. How have preparations for the film been coming along, Mr. Xavier? Oh, no, that well, is his voice. I've already assembled most of the film crew, a lighting specialist, a prop manager, and a <laughs> Their bodies are so tiny. I've also bought the, the chairs are so big. Author. Oh, it's called The Two Musketeers, right? I read the script you sent me on the way here. The story is pretty good. Originally, I was planning to start filming as soon as Sir Kamisato and Lady Ayaka arrived in Fontaine, but uh, I'm afraid <laughs> I've run into a bit of a problem. Oh? What is it? It has to do with the film's investor, Mr. Morris. Look how big he that suddenly pork informed is. me this morning that he's encountered some financial trouble and will be unable to release to me the amount of funding agreed upon. Mr. It's said Morris. That Fontaine's legal system is well developed. If he has violated the contract, then can't you simply take him to court over the matter? <laughs> Ah, well, I'm still more concerned about filming. Even if I were to take him to court, I'm afraid it would take months before the case could even be heard. Then, is there a way we could raise funds ourselves? Then to let's solve the threaten him. I've considered that option too, but unfortunately, it's difficult to gather such a large amount of mora on such short notice. Besides, we have to consider the film festival's submission deadline. Hmm. <laughs> Mr. Xavier, if Ayaka and I were willing to perform for free, would that oh. resolve the problem you are currently facing? Wait, do we know they can perform? <laughs> Is it made by giants? See, and like you maybe could argue like, oh, there are people in this world that are larger. Um, like we fought some uh, Fatui members who are very tall. And I don't know if that is just it is a tall human being or they are like a special type of creature. Because we've got like animal people. Maybe there's like tall people. <laughs> there's a tall people race or something. I don't know. Like, we've seen them. I've seen characters that could fit comfortably in these chairs, but none of them are, like, main characters. So I, maybe that's maybe that's who the chairs are for. The random, extremely tall men that you fight in the woods sometimes. What? Uh, no, out of the question. To have you come all this way just to act for free? Oh, no, 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 no. This is like that when a Westerner do. goes to Japan and all the door frames worry, are too Mr. short. Xavier. Yeah. My brother and I had actually intended to work for free after receiving your invitation. Inazuma has only recently reopened its borders and needs to strengthen its relations and cultural ties with other nations. We didn't have many collaboration projects with Fontaine in the past, so we hoped this trip would serve as a good start for the future. When I went to Japan, I felt so giant. No clothes would fit me. <laughs> I can't wait. I'm going to feel like... I feel like I'm going to feel like right at home. Indeed. Or you maybe I'll, fe maybe I'll feel giant. That'd be crazy. Agreed to come to Fontaine. I understand, but... Having you two act for free just doesn't seem right. Not at all. While we're officially here to conduct a cultural survey of sorts, we must express our sincerity if we want to establish formal cultural ties with your nation. I had to duck into doorways. I think you'll also feel larger. Yeah. Yeah, that man, that'll be a weird that'll be that'll be a weird feeling. Because I'm so used to just being teeny tiny compared to everyone towering around me. You never know when an extremely tall man from the woods might come over for dinner. Exactly! That's what all these chairs are for. That's what every chair in the fucking game is for. This film will serve as proof of friendly cooperation and cultural exchange between Inazuma and Fontaine. It's my hope that the film can be finished and released as smoothly as possible. If you still don't feel comfortable with this arrangement, I would also be more than happy to be introduced to some other renowned individuals in Fontaine's literary and artistic circles. 
Uh, uh, all right. I'll do as you say. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'll make sure to cobble together enough more and now, even if it means selling my house, my camera, and every single family heirloom. No, Come on, don't do no. that. You don't need to go that far. I'll also help you out as a brand sponsor. Oh. Just say that you got our contribution from some personal friends. Me too. Even though I didn't bring much more to spend on this trip, it's still better than nothing. Oh, hi, Turnip. You are too kind, all of you. Turnip I, cam? I really don't know how to... Hi. <laughs> uh, all right, enough about that. Now that we have Xavier's savings, my support, and two leads who are willing to act for free, I think we will be able to make this happen. So, instead of Mora, you'll help with oh, filming I need my water. and production. Oh, but how can we help with that? We don't know much about making a film. All right. Pull yourself together, Xavier. Tell us if there are still any open positions left among the crew. Uh, oh, uh, all right. Uh, let me think. We still need a camera operator, a clapper loader, and someone to manage logistics. <gasps> you lay it down. I originally wanted to personally serve oh, as director, but water. I've been I'm gonna too go busy get working water. as the producer. So the positions of director and director's assistant will also need to be filled. Paimon knows what the director and the logistics support person do, but what's a clapper loader? The clapper loader is responsible for using the clapper board to record and organize the information of each shot when the camera operator begins shooting. The work requires both patience and careful attention to detail. A clapper board? Oh, you mean the thing they hold that goes clap whenever they start filming? Yes, that's right. Are you interested in that oh. job? For sure! Paimon's always wanted to try that! All right! Then you'll be our clapper loader. I can find someone from the store to help with logistics. What do you think, Xavier? Oh, fine by me. As for our camera operator, I was thinking of letting the traveler take the role. Oh, she's great when it comes to using a camera. Paimon can't even count how many things we've taken photos of during our journey. Yes, that's also what I was thinking. I noticed the Traveler had an eye for photography and composition when we worked together previously. Oh, look at him. I'm sure that's due to the Traveler's so journey cute. across to that and all the places I've seen. After so many adventures, using a camera must be second nature by now. What do you say, Traveler? Are you interested in the job? <laughs> she sounds so exhausted when she asked if Paimon was interested. I do like her so far. Uh, as long as I'll be able to help. Thank you. It really means a lot to me. Come on, friend. Let me give you a big warm hug. Oh, what? Why? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think we'd better get to work. So all that's left for us to find is a director and an assistant. Hi. Oh, me, me, me. I want to be the director's assistant. All we need to do is help the director, right? I can handle that. All right, then all we need is a director. Oh, all the well-known directors in Fontaine are probably also busy working on their own films these days. I'm not sure who will have time to help. Oh, Farina helped out a theater troupe recently by serving as an artistic consultant. She could be a good director, right? Besides, it's not like she has anything else to do right now. Farina? Uh, do you really think Lady Farina would be willing to help us with our humble project? She's not doing anything else. Isn't that the name of Fontaine's Hydro Archon? My brother has already informed me about what happened here in Fontaine. Yep, that's her! She was <laughs> at a theater troupe not too long ago, and now she's taking up work as a director! Oh, okay. Well, uh... Oh, I saw that musical. Her performance was perfect. And the storyboards were also excellent. Don't let her form or identity intimidate you. She's the best candidate we can think of right now. You'll never know until you give her a shot. Fine. You're right, Chiori. I'll do anything for the sake of my film. Anything! I love this guy. <sighs> then I'll have to ask the Traveler and Paimon She's got some boob situation going on? Residence. Oh, I didn't see. I just hope she'll agree to help. Do you need us to also come along? Look at 
turn No, it. there's He's no need so to trouble cute. you with this. Besides, you've just arrived in Fontaine, and I'm sure there are Your many places you so would like big. to visit. Just leave this task to me. It's part of my duties as the producer. Very well. Then we'll be waiting to hear the good news. I'll go with you. By the way, you might want to consider bringing a gift. <laughs> and don't worry, we won't simply drop you off at Farina's place. We know Farina pretty well by now, so having some familiar faces there should help your chances. Besides, the whole thing was our idea in the first place. All right, then I'll start making preparations. As for the gift... Hmm... A gift for someone who was once seen as the Hydra Oricon. I wonder what she would like. I recall that Lady Farina once fancied a clockwork ring. So perhaps I should get another exquisite clockwork contraption for her. Huh? Can't we just bring some desserts like the Fontanelia mousse? Oh, Yoi Mia. Yeah. Hmm, but wouldn't that be a little too cheap? She's got like a half boob she situation. Like so. Isn't the Fontanelia festival happening right now? I heard Aval tell us on the Aquabus that Farina introduced the tradition of going door to door and asking for sweets. To do something like that, she must have a real sweet tooth. I agree with Yoimiya. If the gift is too fancy, it might actually make her feel more uncomfortable. Alright then, let's go buy some Fontanelia mousse! <laughs> <clears throat> Will that really be enough? We'll be asking her to do a lot of work, you know. Hmm. Sugar crusted right. slime. We need to further <laughs> sweeten I the deal. Huh? You want something even sweeter than Fontanelia mousse? Yes. We'll need a gift that's sweeter than any dessert in the world. But what could that be? <laughs> Your words of praise. Oh, her like, her boob wrap? Yeah. Like somehow it's still, they're like, the ba those bandages are really supporting her. <laughs> you go ahead. No need to worry about us. Her outfit is so oh, cute. I hope Farina will like the gifts we prepared. Oh, and if you still think we should get something else for her, just let me know. I should be able to make some fireworks. <laughs> Looking forward to the good news. Thanks, Ayato. Oh, so many recipes! Whee. Macarons! Thank you, sir. Go to Farina's apartment. She's hot, but girl, what is going on? You could say that about like every character in this game. <laughs> Look at him, he's laying on my keyboard a little bit. You're so silly. Close your eyes all the way, idiot. What the hell? <laughs> you doing a battle royale? Cool. I kind of wish the battle royale had like sound effects. 
Like, I wish I could hear y'all beating the shit out of each other. Okay, I'll go knock on the door. Farina, please allow me to introduce myself. I am Xavier, oh, of film win. director. Hello. Oh, is that the traveler in Paimon I see behind you? <laughs> and who's this? I'm Chiori. Ah, oh, the one from Chioria Boutique. Hello, hello. <laughs> so, what are you all doing here? Uh, do you need something? Did you just get up, <laughs> I Farina? just murdered you. Ah, you know? oh, Obi won! Congrats, Obi, for killing everyone. Uh, Paimon, try to be nice. Remember? Uh -huh. Oh, I. Uh, Paimon means the weather is so nice in the afternoon and the sun is so warm. Just like how you make us feel. Sleeping in late is a really smart idea. Oh, that was a great recovery. Uh, no. I was just up late last night reading some novels. Uh, what does sleeping in have to do with the weather? <clears throat> this is a small gift we've prepared for you, Lady Farina. We hope you like it. No need to be so formal. I'm just a regular person like everyone else now. Oh, is this Fontanalia Moose? <laughs> it's one of my favorites. As you can see, That's she's right. very normal so now. Actually, there's something we need your help with. Given your renowned passion and understanding of drama, I would like to ask that you serve as the director of our film <laughs> you crew. stuck on top. Uh, You'll come down eventually. But didn't you just say that you're a director? Yes, but for this particular project, I'm mainly working as a producer. Besides, I'm sure that your understanding of the performing arts far surpasses my own, Lady Farina. Are the Traveler and Paimon also part of the film crew? Yep, we sure are! Paimon's the clapper loader and she's the camera operator! Camera operator? That can be a pretty technical job, and it directly affects the final quality of the film. Are you really up to it? I have experience. No, I'm not questioning your abilities. It's just that I've never really seen you use a camera before. I'm not questioning you your abilities. I'm just. Traveler and see for yourself. I'm just questioning your abilities. You camera skills, then you'd have nothing to worry about and can join the team. What do you say? Uh, you sure are getting better at rolling with the situation, Paimon. Hmm. Oh, I do wish to see how skilled the traveler really is with a camera. All right. How about this? We'll work with what we have. I'll give you some scenarios and see if your work is up to my standards. Sure, no problem. Very good. It's essential for the camera operator to understand the director's vision. I'll make my decision after seeing your work. Are you ready? I have high standards, you know. Okay, grab the camera and I'll give you a scenario. Is it gonna have us take pictures of like moving situations? Filming theme directed by Farina. Estelle is the boss of Beaumont Workshop and has always been proud of her forging machine, as it can not only precisely control strength of temperature, but also take no effort from the blacksmith. Let us film a promotional video for her workshop. Remember to emphasize the superiority of her forging machine. Who's the eye patch girl? I'm still thinking about her. You will need to film several shots according to the director's requirements and compile them into a video. Camera positioning is key and you should ascertain the camera position requirements beforehand. Oh, okay. When filming, there will be a narrative requirement. Select the most suitable narration according to the story. 
Try to satisfy all of the director's filming requirements. After selecting the most suitable choices for the all of the camera positions and narration, you may begin filming and see the results. Whoa, this is... This is a lot going on. You need a scene that shows off the Beaumont workshop. Oh, am I not like out there taking it? Whoa, okay. I mean, I kind of thought I'd be taking the pictures, but sure. The forging machine. There it is. The atmosphere. The weapons. <laughs> Cake. And the... The workshop again. I guess this? Well, maybe the outside. We like a logo. Wow, I made a movie. skill than I thought. I'm a bit of a film All expert. All the shots had a great composition, and I could really feel a connection to the characters and their lines. So, what's the verdict? Yeah! Does that mean you agree to be our director, Farina? <laughs> Did you think I would agree just like that? After our performance of The Little Oceaned, I've begun to make a name for myself again, you know. In fact, I've already had several troops approach me for the Fontanalia Film Festival. Unfortunately, the scripts were all pretty boring and didn't pique my interest. If others were to find out I agreed to work with you so easily, then, well... Hey, but didn't we have a deal? What else do we need to do to convince you, Farina? Uh, well, what about the pay? <laughs> huh? You know, how much you're willing to pay me to be the director? The pay is also an important factor for me to consider, you know. That's true, she doesn't have any I income coming well, in. Well, uh, I can offer you this much? What? That's all? If Nervilat were to hear of this, he could charge you with underpaying your labor. I'm sorry, but our crew is in a tight financial spot at the moment. I see. Well, even though it's highly unlikely now that I'll join your crew, there's still something I'd like to ask. Exactly what film are you planning to make? Oh, uh, our script is an adaptation of The Two Musketeers. Huh? Wait, you mean the suspense thriller novel that was a number one bestseller? Oh my god, is that what oh, she was reading that last read night? You. Of course I read it! I've always had a keen interest in artistic works that strike a chord with the populace. We got them, boys. I see. It all makes sense now. You must have used most of the budget to pay for the copyright. Uh, not really. The novel's <laughs> author transferred the copyright to me practically for free once he heard that I wanted to make a film adaptation of the story. The lack of budget is due to another issue. He probably just wants to get his name out there. So, Mora isn't the most important thing to him right now. It reminds me of a delivery courier who wears one of my designs while traveling all across Tavat. I didn't charge her much for the outfit either. The exposure she provides for my brand is well worth it. Payment and exposure. Uh... So, are you a big fan of this story, Farina? Well, uh... It's all right. 
The pacing of the story is good, but the character relationships could use some work. When I was reading it before, I always felt like some things were left on a rather unsatisfactory note. I have high standards, you know. Ahem, Mr. Xavier. <laughs> this is so cute. speaking, I agree to be the director. How much freedom would I have in terms of script revisions and creative interpretation? Oh, oh, as much freedom as you would need. I wouldn't dare doubt the tastes of Fontaine's greatest star. Good. Then I'm free to alter the script as I see fit. <laughs> oh no, I hope Absolutely it doesn't become like no a completely problem. different story. Now's your chance to make a film that you love. It seems that your crew really can't go on without my care and direction. So, you agree? Yes, I agree. Although the pay is well below what someone of my caliber deserves. A great script calls for a great director. I mustn't let a perfectly good story be ruined due to lack of funds. If you have fine cheese and bread, you wouldn't just let it sit on the counter and get moldy just because you lack an oven, right? Sure, that's a good comparison. Thank you, Farina. Oh, Hydro Archon above! I'm not dreaming, am I? Somebody pinch me. There's no more Hydro Archon, you know. And it's still a little early to celebrate. There's a lot that goes into shooting a film. Although, the trickiest tasks of finalizing the script and casting the actors have already been taken care of, we'll still need to reserve filming locations. Not to say, set up lighting and props. And uh, by the way, since we'll be filming The Two Musketeers, we'll need to find an action choreographer. Ideally, a professional who has actual experience with muskets. Yes, I've thought about this as well. I was hoping that you might know someone who could handle the job. I was wondering when, like, guns would make their appearance. Me? Because that's all I knew mm -hmm. about the event. If this was before, I could have simply asked Glorand. But it's already been some time since I last talked to her. Navia can also use firearms, but unfortunately, her style is quite different from that of the characters in the story. Could we ask the Special Security and Surveillance Patrol? Oh, you mean the Special Patrol's Musketeers? Yes, that's right. They work with muskets every day. I can't think of anyone more qualified than them. They would be under Nervilat's jurisdiction. Unfortunately, I, uh, don't have any connection with them at all. Hmm, so... In the end, we still have to start by talking to Nervalette. <laughs> no need to go to all that trouble. I know their captain, Chevrus. She Chevrus? Oh, you do? Wait, Chiari, how do you know the captain of the special patrol's is, musketeers? Is that eyepatch girl? No particular reason. Running a business means dealing with some trouble from time to time, and she's helped me out on a few occasions. In return, I've helped her handle a few situations in which the special patrol couldn't get involved directly. So, we've gotten to know each other over time. Uh, so you're saying there's been times when the Special Patrol needed a fashion designer to handle a situation? <laughs> Your work is becoming more and more mysterious. It'd be best to keep it that way. Whoa. Anyway. Whoa, what? Okay. What do you think about asking the captain to be our musket action choreographer? She sounds professional enough. She is a captain after all. <laughs> I have no objections. But I imagine the special security and surveillance patrol must be busy with their duties. Do you think she'd really have time to help with shooting a film? And then there's the issue of pay. Well, it just so happens that she's also not the kind of person that's just after Mora. As for whether she has time, I'll have to go and ask her first. Then I'll leave that to you. Macaroni's on sale today, so I've got to go. You can just <laughs> tell me how things went when we discuss tomorrow's plan later. No problem. <laughs> That's gonna be I my new exit line. Of course.
just wait until the day of our premiere. You'll witness the true power of my name in these lands. <laughs> You'll be so glad I agreed to help. I can guarantee that even the standing tickets will be sold out. I'll be sure to ask some people I know to see if they'd be willing to act as extras. <laughs> Seems like you're finally getting more comfortable with your own reputation now. I didn't ask for the Clapper Loader's commentary, Paimon. I can't wait to see our film's premiere. Then let's get going. I happen to know where Chevrolet is today. By the way, I'm curious. If my pay is so low, then what about our two lead actors? Didn't they travel here all the way from Inazuma? Actually, they told us that they see the trip as part of a cultural exchange, so they didn't ask for any pay. What? So is every person into that who doesn't want money gathered here to shoot this film? Mm. Don't tell me Chiori isn't being paid either. <laughs> I already knew Xavier from before, and he's also agreed to give my brand some good exposure. It seems the gods have really smiled upon you, Xavier. And that certainly doesn't include me, mind you. <laughs> I love how many characters in Fontaine are secretly mob bosses. They've all got, like, very strange connections. The Two Musketeers. Oh, it's this song. Oh, hearing this makes me sad now. Besides I don't spend a lot of time in Fontaine. I should also <laughs> pick up some tomato sauce. Time to act. It is very pretty here. Oh, did I happen huh? upon... Isn't that Charlotte? Is this the same quest? Who's your friend and what are they chatting about? Is this the same quest, Paimon? Be pleased with the cherry on top, Charlotte. Journalist extraordinaire. Please tell me you're joking. I read that a gang of criminals tricked the Gardamex by disguising themselves as blubber beasts. It's true, isn't it? This feels a little be. out of place. I've invested all my savings into graph adversarial technology and even taken out a sizable bank loan. I'm begging you, begging you like the beggiest beggar in all of Begdom. I need you to calm down a little, Miss Lapine, Pauline. I admire your passion for your research, <laughs> and I don't mean to dash your hopes for those. Oh, it's uh, the end of a limited time orders. event quest. But okay. I'm afraid I'm not joking. The Blubber Beast incident was a short story mailed to us by an anonymous amateur author, written in the style of a true story. Uh, hot, uh, short story? Hmm. It sounds like they're just discussing a story, but why does this Miss Lapine Pauline seem so distressed? Miss Lapine Pauline. Funnily enough, I actually remember being in a meeting where the editing team was debating the potential risk of misleading the public with this story. They even went to Maison Guardianage for advice. But to our surprise, they fully supported us printing it. They figured that the false intel would be a great way to dupe potential criminals into wearing ridiculous costumes when breaking the law. <laughs> in truth, Gardamex are extremely sophisticated in their capabilities. They can identify criminals just as reliably as the best human guards, so a crude disguise isn't going to get you far. If anything, it'll just make you stand out all the more. Since we ran that story, the Maison Guardianage has made a slew of arrests, including, uh, one phantom blubber beast, a titanic red-crowned finch, and a specter man. 
It's so funny to see this from the perspective of the traveler that didn't do the quest. The first time I'm learning of an innocent <laughs> yeah, I don't know what the hell's going on. And investing so much more of for nothing. Uh -oh. Lapine Pauline! She really sounds like she's in pain. Um, Pina thinks we should just ask Charlotte what's going on. Hey, Charlotte! Her little cat Traveler, mouth. Paimon, it's you. That was. I cute. was in the area taking some photos for a story when I got to talking to Miss Lapine Pauline about her research. She read an article in the Steambird about a criminal who evaded Gardamek detection by disguising themselves as a blubber beast. Inspired by this story, she spent a lot of more researching counter-criminal image recognition technology. Her aim was to improve Fontaine's public security by developing a device that could enhance Gardamek's target recognition capabilities. She was hoping I could write an article to spread awareness about image recognition technology. She even paid me for the article and gave me one of her prototype devices before I could get a word in. But unfortunately, it was just a fictional story, and her efforts and aspirations were all in vain. I tried to let her down gently, but she's finding it all very hard to accept. This is a new situation for us, too. It's such a pity. It seems like the author was only trying to make the story interesting. And the Maison Guardianage only had Fontaine's best interest in mind. She's just a victim of misunderstanding. Wait, Miss Lapine Pauline? What are you doing? I'm gonna pick a fight with a Gardamek, head to the Opera Epicles, and get a one-way ticket to the Fortress of Meropede. That way, I won't have to repay my debts. It's the only way I can afford to keep on living. Okay. Oh, there's no need to go that far. I mean, come on. Look at you. You wouldn't even dent the Gardamex armor. In all likelihood, they'd only hold you up at the Maison Guardianage for a few days before letting you out, and then you'd still have to repay your debts. Actually, instead of going into the technicalities of that, how much did you actually invest? How bad can it really be? Two, two hundred and seventy thousand mora. Okay. Well, escaping to the Fortress of Meripede over a sum like that seems like a last resort. Surely there must be other options. Not anymore. I used to be an equipment supplier to the Fontaine Research Institute. Y'all, I don't care pieces. about this. And now I'm just a small... It's not just my savings that are gone. It's my whole... <laughs> my life. Don't despair. This prototype you've given me. The camera let... The just give me a third camera. That I know you're gonna do it. it. Absolutely. So keep calm. I can't if this is. Oh, maybe. Come on. Stop daydreaming about. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And I can probably speak to some people. There's no time to lose. I need to get to work. Early bird gets the worm. Uh, can you believe her? Paimon's pretty sure our advice went in one. It's understandable. One imp, but don't you worry. Her research. It's reassuring to know that you'll be looking out for her, Charlotte. Go, Charlotte. Actually. It takes the right. Takes a lot we love work. Charlotte here. You're welcome. The boundaries. Yes, that's how I'll free. Oh God, I don't. I don't care. <laughs> God damn! The one time I was like, maybe I'll walk there, and I won't fast travel everywhere. Summary, you can now zoom when you use the camera feature. <laughs> wow. If you're playing as Charlotte, you can walk around and take pictures during combat. Oh, cute. Well, that's fun. Body and mind. Sorry, I must dismiss these notifications, or I will die. Alright, here's my new gadget. When did I get this? Huh.
The bubble gun was an anniversary gift. Wait, okay, I do kind of want to try that out. <laughs> wow. It's not even a gun. Like, they don't even show me using a gun. Alright, that's kind of cute. Zoom lens. Oh, it's activated. And then... I equip my normal camera, of which I have two. Okay, and the zoom lens is applied to it. Wow. Oh. Nice. Hi, Zaku. Thanks for the hydrate. I'm gonna go start this next conversation and then refill my water. Oh, it's her! Do I get to meet her now? All right, this is the place. Hmm. But where's the captain? There's hardly anyone around here. She's over there. The one with an eye patch reading in front of the newsstand. Tell there was something different about her. She seems kind of intimidating. Please wait here for a moment. I'll go fetch her. She's working now, so <laughs> you might not want to get in her way. Working? But isn't she just standing there and reading a novel? Just trust me. Oh, all right. Let's see what happens then. I hope she's crazy. She already sure is a mysterious person. She claims just to be a fashion designer, but she knows all these powerful people. The Court of Fontaine isn't particularly tolerant of visitors from overseas, so it isn't easy for a foreigner to promote their brand here. Even more so in the competitive world of fashion. Even a local like me just trying to make a film has to face all kinds of challenges. So I can only imagine what Chiori has been through to get where she is today. I'm sure that having more connections has definitely worked in her favor. Reading on the job? Detective novel. Huh. One main character? I was not expecting no. her to sound like that. Multiple. Branching storylines. I see. How's the plot coming along? One of the main characters is about to make a choice that will affect the rest of his life. <laughs> I'd wager he's going to make the wrong choice. Anyway, to speed things up, there's something I need your help with. You know, that doesn't depend on me. It all comes down to what the character chooses. Oh my god, I love her. Which is exactly why I'm here to help. What? <sighs> all right. It appears he made the wrong choice in the end. Halt! Huh? What's going on? Are this like headphones? Hand over whatever you're holding. Oh, it's just a book. I didn't buy anything else. Then I'm sure you wouldn't mind letting me have a look. Excuse me, officer. I don't mind you standing around here, not purchasing anything, but I'd prefer if you <laughs> didn't disturb my customers. It's bad for business, you know? Don't give me that act. You won't be able to get off so easily either. I am Chevrus, captain of Fontaine's Special Security and Surveillance Patrol. I will say this one last time. Hand over whatever you're holding at once. And before you do anything unwise, let me remind you that I'll have you on the ground before you can even think about making a run for it. Uh, all right, all right. I'll give it to you. B but please let me say something first. If there's any contraband in that book, 
then the shopkeeper here is the one who slipped it in. I don't have anything to do with this. Oh, damn. Trying to leave me on the hook, huh? You were the one who said you wanted it. <laughs> Save it for the interrogation room. Take them away, Latelier. Didn't even let her look inside. They just embedded to it right away. What's going on here? One second you're reading a book and the next you're escorting people away. And who are... Oh. Aren't you the traveler who's been all over the papers recently? Ooh, her gloves. Sorry. I'm assuming what you wanted to ask me about has to do with them, right? I love gloves uh, with like the two-tone. on what's happening then. Or the palm is a different now color. Now that has been brought to justice, no new shipments of synth will be made and distributed to sellers. The Fontaine guards have been busy collecting the remaining synths still circulating on the market. Thanks to a tip from our reliable source here, this should be the very last batch. Oh, so you were pretending to read a book in order to catch the bad guys! Oh, I'm kind of disappointed. I thought oh, she was like Paimon really invested in the story. Paimon is Paimon, and this is the Traveler and Xavier! Hey, I'm Chevras. You probably already heard me introduce myself, so I won't bother repeating it. Why didn't you just arrest them immediately? Yeah, why didn't you make a move as soon as you had the chance? Were you worried that my intel wasn't accurate? No, I wanted to see if the shopkeeper would turn himself in first. All he had to do was come up to me and say that he didn't know where the synth had come from. If he did that, then I wouldn't have had to press charges on him. He had the whole day to turn the synth over to Shavras, but instead, the moment I came up and blocked Shavras' line of sight, he took the opportunity to sell it off. Yep, he made the wrong choice, even though the right choice was right there in front of him. But you knew they wouldn't make the right choice. Yeah, I knew. I was just hoping I'd be wrong for once. Eh. <laughs> Enough about that, though. Good commentary, Paimon. Oh, you see, it's like this. The Two Musketeers. You certainly have a good eye for a story. So what do you need me to do? Just be the action choreographer for the actors? Yes, that's right. I want to make sure we get all the details right. I want the actor's posture and understanding of firearms to be as realistic as possible. However, I'm afraid this work will require a bit of your time, since you'll have to be present whenever we're filming. Also, as for the pay... No need to say any more. I'll join. Huh? Just <laughs> Everyone's like, we love working for free. Go on. Uh, what Bull Checker is really saying is, if you want to fight the Oni King, you have to go through Sky Cleaving White Iron Lavender Melon first. Wait, wha huh? Hello? Really? You're willing to help us with our <laughs> humble film project? <laughs> what? Do I, hold on. That was like a completely. That was from a different quest, right? What the fuck just happened? Hello? <laughs> this game just had a stroke. Sure, it's no big deal. As I said, we've wrapped up our investigation here, so I don't have any other tasks on my plate for the moment. Besides, I personally really like this novel. I what? even have the collector's edition at home. What the Stories fuck? where justice prevails over evil never get old for me. Why did that happen? Then you've got a deal? <laughs> yes, yeah, it was for I'll the beetle fighting. Tomorrow. Okay. <laughs> Oh, I, I can hardly believe it. I should tell Lady Farina immediately. Oh, and I must tell the prop manager and lighting technician to get everything ready. We start filming tomorrow. Calm down, Xavier. The film is going to take more than just a day to finish. Still, I should also head back now and start preparing the actors' costumes and makeup. All right, guess that's it for today then. Traveler, Paimon, please stay for a moment. I have something to tell you. No, no, the little Claudia like back. poor thing. Her little He's like so tie. He can't even walk straight anymore. It's so cute. <sighs> I don't want to spend our first day fishing our producer out of the fountain. 
I think Xavier would probably be able to hold himself together. He'd better. God, that was so funny. My game just like broke. I really thought she was gonna sound like a chimney. So what do you want to tell us, but Have I do like two her. Musketeers? I've heard a bit about it. The story is about a pair of children born into the household of a baron and their struggle to survive together and take revenge for their mother. They were raised at the baron's estate where their mother worked as a maid. The two were illegitimate children that the baron had with the maid, so they were never treated well by anyone. One day, upon returning home, they found their mother had been murdered and left dead on the floor. It was quite evident that the culprits were the other members of the Baron's household, who never had any kind words to say to them. However, the Baron was able to exert his influence and keep the whole thing under wraps. The mother's death was eventually deemed as a suicide, and there Yikes. was no chance of bringing her murderers to justice. The two siblings decided to flee and someday avenge their mother. Many years later, members of the Baron's family suddenly started turning up dead one after the other all killed by gunshot. Mm. A rainbow rose was found on each of the victim's bodies, being the flower that the kid's mother liked best. The Baron believed that the mother's soul had come to take vengeance on him, so he lived in fear each day. But it was actually those two siblings who had fled all those years ago. They relied on each other to survive and trained day and night, eventually becoming adept musketeers. I would read this they book. Used yeah. all of their abilities to collect evidence and Pretty clues plot. before executing their plan and exacting revenge on the Baron. Their actions let the truth behind their mother's death be known to all. That's quite an exhilarating story. Yep, the Baron got what he deserved <laughs> for his evil deeds, yep. and justice was able to prevail. It was just the kind of story I enjoy. Oh, so is that why you were so willing to join our crew, Chevras? You could say it was one of the reasons. Oh, you mean there were other reasons too? I've read the reports about you. Whether it was at the trials or when you lent your hand to resolve our nation's crisis, you've shown that you've got a strong sense of justice, as well as a great mind for deductions. So what you're implying is... Yes, you're as sharp as I expected. It seems you've experienced many similar situations before. There's been a recent murder case involving muskets. The perpetrator's methods appear to be very similar oh. to what is described in the novel. Huh, really? But Paima didn't see anything about that in today's papers. The Marachose Phantom hasn't yet released any information to the public because the investigation is currently at a standstill. The murderer is extremely cautious. A murder involving firearms? But not that many people use those in Fontaine, right? Could it, please, could it be someone from your platoon? Impossible. We perform a routine inspection of our firearms and ammo reserves every day. If one of the weapons had been fired, it would stick out like a sore thumb. Besides, I trust the members of my platoon. However... Well, that's all I can disclose about the case today. Huh? What do you mean? Hmm? I hope you all can go back and get some shut-eye. You can decide tomorrow whether or not you'd like to join the investigation with me. Sure, we won't I'm look into that reaction at all. I'm aware this not the ideal time to add more to your plate, but the more capable people we have, the better the chances that justice will prevail. Can't someone from the special patrol help you investigate? Carrying out investigations isn't actually supposed to be our responsibility. Our job is to apprehend the perpetrators. Finding them is really up to the Marachose Phantom. You could say I'm taking part in the investigation out of personal interest. I don't want people to see muskets in a negative way, and also, I'm concerned about the similarity between the crimes and the story. You mean, they might be connected somehow? I suspect so. Just to make myself clear, this is not an order, nor is it a deal of any kind. It's a request, nothing more. If you two have any interest in the case after we finish filming tomorrow and are willing to assist me, then I would be most grateful. Hmm. What do you think, Traveler? Let's give it some thought tomorrow. Yeah, you're 
right. Paimon's getting a little tired, too. We've really been hustling all day. You'd better head back and get some rest. It's good to keep a calm mind, especially when you're about to make an important decision. Otherwise, when the moment comes, you might end up like that shopkeeper and not even realize that the right choice is right there in front of you. The crack of them of muskets breaking the silence. Alright, hold on. Now, this is what I call a moment of solitude. Okay. Wait until the following morning. said yesterday afternoon went well. Yeah, and how about you, Ayaka? What were you up to yesterday? After we split up, Ayato went to see Udex Nervilet at the Palais Marmonia. Oh. I was originally thinking of going with him, but he said he could manage it himself. He told me to go see the sights around Fontaine and to enjoy the local culture. So I rode the aqua bus with Yoimiya and visited the opera house on Erinias Island. Yeah, you wouldn't believe what we saw there! Two mechanical puppets that were dancing together! You've already seen them, right? The Dirge of Coppelia. Yeah, yeah, those two! Amazing, aren't they? We sat and watched for quite a while. It was mesmerizing. Like we could keep watching them forever. Oh, it was the same for us the first time we saw them, too. Afterwards, we went swimming at the beach. Well, diving, to be exact. It was the first time I ever breathed underwater. I held Ayaka's hand and we counted down together. Three, two, one, and then splash! We were beneath the waves. <laughs> I didn't dare to open my oh, mouth. Oh, okay. But once I couldn't hold my breath any longer, I decided to take a big breath in. <laughs> Turns out the water wasn't as salty as I imagined. It didn't really taste like anything at all. Before I knew it, I was breathing like normal down there. It was an amazing feeling. Ayaka said I was too nervous and needed to loosen my grip. Uh, she got used to everything way faster than I did. I love that this is just like a thing you can do in Fontaine. I knew that the Traveler could do it. So I had no doubt we could do it, too. That helped me feel at ease as soon as we dove in. The underwater world in Fontaine truly is beautiful. I love seeing the Romaritime flowers blossoming underwater, like little candles lighting up the streets at night. Yeah, and there were so many creatures that we'd never seen in Inazuma. Like those fish that shimmer like a sword blade. Whoosh! Oh, and those big fish that call when they see people. Rays and Blubber Beast. <laughs> I just love the name Blubber Beast. Uh, just wait till Pops and the others hear about this. They probably won't believe a word I say. <laughs> Ayata, like, like Ayaka, like, like flying around underwater in her like big ass dress is so funny. The way it like doesn't, like, the way that clothing doesn't have like the correct physics. 
Especially underwater. <laughs> Yoimiya was down there for quite a while. It was dark before we finally rode the Aquabus back to the city. I figured she'd want to sleep in today. <laughs> yeah, even I was worried that I wouldn't be able to get up. <sighs> I still felt like I was drifting in the waves when I went to sleep last night. But as soon as I woke up today, I remembered that we'd all be shooting a film together and I was ready to go. Speaking of the film, where's everybody else? My brother and Xavier were speaking to the restaurant owner about using the place as a filming location. They should be here soon. As for the others, they... We're here. God, her shoes are so cool. Please excuse my tardiness. I just finished the Special Patrol's six-mile morning jog. Wait, six miles? Ugh, I'm so tired. <laughs> I heard you all chatting, so I decided to come down. I sure could use some of that endless energy everyone else has. Good morning, everyone. Morning. Mm. Can someone fetch me a cup of coffee? More milk, hold the sugar. Sure, I'd be happy to do that for you. No, you can't go anywhere. Please, have a seat over here so I can get started on your makeup. Ugh, the last thing I want is coffee stains on my costumes. I can get the coffee. It's the perfect job for an assistant. Ugh, so much energy. I love that she's not a morning person. Secret? Oh, Yoimiya's always like that. But you sure look exhausted, Farina. It's because you're not used to waking up so early, huh? Of course not. I spent the whole night reading the novel from cover to cover, marking sections that either need to be omitted or adapted. Wow, Paimon didn't expect you to be so thorough. <laughs> well, I was the biggest star in all of Fontaine, after all. It takes more than just a pretty face to earn a reputation like that. I know how to get serious when the situation calls for it. I went all out when I was acting as an Archon, so why wouldn't I do the same for my own life? Here's your coffee, Director Farina. That was a bizarre perspective. Thank you. Ah, the sound of being called director and the aroma of coffee. <laughs> oh, it's because it's they can't as hold the item. As the birds chirping <laughs> in the morning. They're conveniently showing the like coffee cup out of camera shot. So it's like she's holding it. Oh, it seems everyone has managed to arrive on time. Oh wait, she is holding it. Kind of? We've reached an agreement with the restaurant owner. We are free to use the second floor to shoot our film. I can see it. Really? That's They're great. purposefully like not He's showing really it. He's looking forward to our film and hopes that providing his restaurant as a filming location will attract more customers. Well then, Mr. Xavier, I'll leave the rest to you. Okay, thanks. Show me her holding the First, coffee cup. I'd like to introduce our new members. This is our prop manager, Veronique. She'll be in charge of all the films, props, and items. And this is Bono, our lighting technician. He'll be in charge of lighting and illumination to set up each scene's atmosphere. Bono and Veronique. Wow. Sure feels like we have some real professionals joining the crew now. First of all, please allow me to first express my sincerest gratitude to everyone in the they crew. They would not show her when holding the coffee cup. informed me yesterday that he wouldn't be able to provide the funds, I really thought that this was the nail in the coffin for this film. I had no idea that I'd find so many people willing to help me on such short notice. Thank you. Thank you all from the bottom of my heart. No need to be so cordial, Mr. Xavier. We're all honored to be a part of this. Your works made a profound impression on me when I saw them back in Inazuma. I am sure that someday, this film will be remembered as a prime example of cultural exchange between Fontaine and Inazuma. Yes, the story is the reason I agreed to join. 
I can't bear to even imagine what this film would look like without the very best director. Anyway, I would like to make a promise to everyone that as the producer of this film, I'll do whatever I can to ensure that everything goes as smoothly as possible. This is not just my film. It also embodies the thoughts and feelings of every person here, as well as the endless effort we are about to pour into it. <laughs> so, without further ado, the Two Musketeers will officially begin filming now! You may take it from here, Director Farina. All right. Listen up, everyone. The first scene takes place when the two young musketeers are living at the Baron's home, still unaware of all that is about to happen to them. We'll need props and lighting to set the scene. Our lead actors can go get their makeup done, and extras, please take this time to go over your positions. Whoa, seems Farina's really kicking things into gear as the director. Is everyone clear? I don't want anyone traipsing around the set like umbrella finches. All right, cameras will start rolling as soon as the set is ready. Let's make a film that'll make some serious waves in Fontaine. Uh, not the kind of waves that drown people. I mean, the good <laughs> kind of waves. <laughs> uh, seems like she's still a bit traumatized by that. Holy shit. Anyway, let's go see if there's anything we can do to help. Act two. Oh, okay. This is the start of act two. How many parts are there to this? I think it was four. Four? Five. Okay. What time is it? Hmm, it's almost one. I think I might... I think I might wrap it up here. Yeah. I wanna, I wanna, I wanna clean. I wanna clean the house. I wanna get karaoke set up. This event is cute though. And uh, the, the new, the new girls are very cute. When does this end? I think in like, okay, one week. Well, we'll see if I get to it. I like her. She's very cute, Eye patch girl. All right, do I have anything else to do? <laughs> oh, come on. Let me click. Navia is so cute. And her play style is so fun. When do we get- when can I buy more of these? Oh. Cool. Like, tomorrow. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my gosh. Wow. Huh? All will be revealed in the next volume? Huh, drat. I like my turnip cam. I think I'm gonna keep this up whenever he's on, on it on the desk with me. Alrighty, is Winnie already doing her karaoke? Jesus. Yeah, okay, let's raid Winnie. 
Wendy is doing a New Year's karaoke, um, and she claims that she is going to be singing 101 songs. The value of knowledge cannot simply be quantified in monetary terms. We'll see. But the fact that she's already started is insane to me. <laughs> All right, uh, I'll see you guys tonight. Um, my karaoke is at 6 p.m. Central, um, and I'll be singing with a couple friends, IRL, uh, and hopefully it is not too scuff. All right, thanks for hanging out. Bye-bye!